Welcome back to the Citizen Channel. We're all staying safe and well. I continue our look at the history of City since 1880. Yes, so this is part two. Yes, so check out part one. We're looking at October season 23-24. Yes, I'm doing updated ones and I think I'm up to about the mid-70s as I'm recording this on the history of City since 1880. So uh, join me today as we do part two. Yes, part two of October 23-24. In part one, we noted the sad loss, of course, of City legend Franny Lee. And we got back on track in the league with a win over Brighton after two consecutive league losses to Wolves and Arsenal. So join me as we look at what happened in the rest of October. Please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. Everything City past and present, of course. Great to have you on board. Spread the word. Give us your memories of, of this as a hopefully will uh, re, sort of remind you of stuff and make you think and uh, let me know your thoughts. It'd be great to hear from you. And if you've got time to just give us a little thumbs up, a little like. That'd be much appreciated, right? Yes, to finish off, we got up to the 23rd of October and Manchester City unveiled a pitch dedication to legendary former captain Ilkay Gundogan on the midfielder's 33rd birthday. Shouldn't have gone, should he really? To mark the German's outstanding seven years of service to the club, a mosaic paying tribute to his title winning goal against Aston Villa in 2022 was installed by the training pitch at the City Football Academy. So there you go. A few of those. We'll have to build more pitches, won't we, at some stage? 25th of October, a trip, match day three. Yeah, we've all unbeaten at the moment. Match day three, a trip to Young Boys. And a trip to the, uh, of course, the Wankdorf Stadium, very, very aptly named, of course. 8 pm kickoff, match day three, and it ended Young Boys 1, Manchester City 3. Pepsi 11, he had seven changes to the last game against Brighton. Uh, Edison. Lewis Akanji, Edison was playing, making his 300th appearance in this one. Lewis Akanji, Diaz, Aki, Rodri, Kovacic, Nunes, Grealish, Doku and Haaland. On the bench, Ortega, Carson, Walker, Philip, Stones, Alvarez, Bernardo, Gomez, Gavardi, Old Foden, Bob and Hamilton. Flipping heck, more on the bench than on the pitch. Match report, no goals first half despite some pretty close calls as City had the better chances. 24 minutes, Doku found his standing foot slipping on the soggy artificial surface. Yeah, it's an artificial pitch at uh, the Wankdorf Stadium and his shot pops up nicely for the keeper. That was an escape for them. 33 minutes keeper under pressure drops it and Nunes deflects it towards goal. He doesn't get a clear strike on it, but it's cleared off the line. 45 minutes, Rodri meets a corner and the keeper saves, though he knew very little about it. Rodri was a bit unlucky with that one. Talking points really at half time. The artificial pitch played okay considering the deluge on it, but of course it, it did affect Doku with that chance he had and was possibly uh, earlier. Nunes did, didn't read the bounce very well on a cross as well. Grealish had his best half for a long time in Sky Blue, so that was nice to say that. He's booking his ideas up now. Doku's arrived. Second half, 48 minutes, 1-0. Diaz has his header from Rod a Rodri Cross, put onto the crossbar, and the Kanji follows up to make it 1-0. His first City goal, yeah, and sort of made up for being sent off the other day. 52 minutes, a good chance for Ireland, but straight at the keeper whilst we watch replays. Lewis tries to play Elliot offside, but he isn't. He breaks and managed to chip nicely over Edison. It looks as though it's just going wide, but it sneaks in at the far post, and it's 1-1. Poor by City. 65 minutes, a Grealish shot blocked, but Rodri has his foot stood on and the ref straight to the spot and VAR find no reason to uh, rule it out, so it's a penalty. Haaland is in a Franny Lee smashes it and appears to go through the keeper, diving to his left, and it does go through the keeper. He should have really done a little bit better. And it's 2 on 72 minutes, Alvarez and Bernardo, Bernardo off, Nunes and Doku on. 74 minutes, Alvarez has it in the net after a 1-2 with Haaland, but Grealish had handled in the build-up. 86 minutes, Haaland buries it with the keeper not moving his right foot into the top corner after some good Rodri work. It's 3-1. 90 minutes, subs on, Gomez and Phillips off Haaland and Rodri. And that's that. We got there. The pitch was never easy, especially with that rain on it as well. That was constant throughout the, the game. The rain, it never stopped. 
I was quite impressed with Young Boys though, but uh, City did deserve the win. The match stats, Young Boys 10 shots, 4 on target, City 26 shots, 14 on target. Possession was 69% for City. The pass accuracy was as high as 93% for City. That's one of the highest I've seen this season so far. XG philosophy, Young Boys 0.52, City 4.25. And so the Group G standings after this game. First, City with 9 points plus 6. Second, Leipzig 6 points plus 2. Two goals, third young boys one point minus four, fourth red star the same one point minus four. For me, man of the match for me was Grealish, uh, mainly because of the first half, but it's definitely one of his best games for ages, uh, and certainly better than Doku on the night. Lewis picked up the Champions League's man of the match again. Headlines, Daily Mail, Jack Gorn, Haaland is pitch perfect as City gear up for the derby. Uh, Manchester News back page, boy, oh boy, City avoid any slip-ups as Haaland rescues tense night on a plastic pitch. Inside, Simon Bukowski wrote, no slip-ups as Haaland finds scoring boots and City rolls Swiss aside. See what he did there? 29th of October, it's derby day, of course. Match day 10 at Old Trafford. And it ends United near nil City three. Yes, it should have been a lot more. Pepsi eleven six changes to that young boys team. Nice and rested after team. Edison Walker, Stones, Diaz, Gvardiol, Rodri, Bernardo, Foden, Grealish. That was this was his hundredth appearance. Alvarez and Haaland. The subs: Ortega, Phillips, Aki, Kovacic, Doku, Gomez, Nunes, Bob, and Lewis. Uh, them, yeah, just as a matter of interest, any any of these names still knocking around a, a few months later? Onana, Dalla, Evans, Maguire, Lindelof, Amrabat, McTominay, Eriksson, Fernandez, Hodgland and Rashford. Yes, uh, Maguire and Evans, eh? Leicester 2018, that was. Minutes of applause for Bobby Charlton, of course, who passed away last week. All players were on the pitch, including Tony Buck, Buzzer and Kiddo. Match report, key moments, first half, eight minutes, a good move. Rodri to Walker down, down the line. Anana saves the folding header. Uh, just as it looks like Harlem will pop it in. Anana gets a hand to it, but uh, really sh Harlem should have gone in with his head. If he'd gone with his head, he would have scored a goal, but he tried to put it in with his boot. By the time he was waiting for it to come down a little bit, Anana has saved it. 21 minutes, Rodri is held back by Hodgland after VAR and Turner, who didn't want to give it. It took forever to check the monitor. We do get a penalty, and a United fan saying it wasn't. Quite clearly was. Onana gets booked for time wasting. 24 minutes, Haaland sends Onana the wrong way, and it's 1 0. 31 minutes, a folding error. Hodgland clears, clear stones, gets a toe in as we escape with that one. Thought it was about the only thing they did in the first half. 47 minutes against, sorry, they did do something else. Against the run of play from a nothing, Hodgland is cleared on the edge, shoots, but Edison gets a hand out for a corner. If he put his laces right for it, I think if he'd miss hit it a little bit, he probably would have scored. 49 minutes, oh, Harlan with all the goal to head at. His header is saved by Anana coming back the other way, and that was an escape for United just before half time. Into the second half, and the 49 minutes, a reverse pass from Grealish to Bernardo. His cross this time is headed home by Haaland. Similar, similar to that first miss with Onana not getting near it. It's 2 0. 69 minutes, a great chance for United, their best of the game, and last one, but under pressure from Walker, Rashford drags his shot wide from close in. 71 minutes, Haaland tries to clip it over Anana, but like the great Schmeier. Michael in the old days, it hits his head and, or his nose or the side of his face and uh, denies Haaland his hat-trick. 80 minutes, Rodri takes a shot, which Anana could only parry. He should have probably put it out for a corner in fairness. And he parries it right out to Haaland, who's on, on the right-hand side. Haaland decides to, to put it across the box, a six-yard box for Folden who gets in between two defenders and it's 3-0 United not really anything to offer after this we got six or seven minutes injury time with United players fouling and crying and moaning and whinging uh, typical shot seven by United three on target 21 by City 10 on target possession was 61% for City the XG philosophy United 1.18 oh, that's not too bad actually and City 4.13 the man of the match uh, Bernardo top performance uh, both City and me Pitt Bernardo United were poor we were good should have been more simple as that headlines Manchester News front page three and easy for City in victory stroll 
that page demolition derby inside Simon Pukowski points beans prizes Bernardo 9 out of 10 from Simon other back pages the mirror says ha ha land express Harland's mad keen you know, that's because United fans have taunted Harland with Roy Keane jibes the sun says blues the daddy the star said flex in the city the mail said Harland has last laugh I said a class above the time said keen chance fired me up says Harland at the 30th of October, as we get towards the end of the month, at the Ballon d'Or Awards, I think they were held in Paris, Erling finished running up to Messi. Absolute, absolute disgrace. Not as though he ain't got enough of them, is it really, Messi? Come on. Absolute robbery for Haaland, that one. Other City players in the top 10. Bernardo was number 9, Alves number 7, Rodri number 5 and KDB number 4. Erling did pick up a trophy, though, the Gerd Muller trophy for scoring goals, of course. Edison, sadly, uh, unfairly in my mind, finished runners-up for the Yashin trophy. But we, for the second time in a row, won the Men's Club of the Year. So there you go, we're a brilliant a little old city, eh? Uh, Ballon d'Or Club of the Year for the second year running. And that's that, guys. A very interesting month on the pitch. Sad off the pitch, of course, the loss of Francis Lee. And, of course, for United fans, the loss of Bobby Charlton. Uh, but uh, that was City's October 23-24 season there. Hope you enjoyed Let me know any memories you've got. I've sort, of, uh, sort of put them into the forefront from what I've been talking about today. And, of course, uh, join me back for uh, a look at November. See how that goes. Let us know your thoughts, guys. Great to hear from you. So me again, I only ask one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Bye for now.